Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. My name is Stanley and along with my wife Jen, we are the Crumbs in the Philippines. Today we're going to talk about five reasons not to retire in the Philippines in 2023. Stick with us and find out what those reasons are. See you in a minute. Welcome back, everyone, and, and thanks for joining us again today. We really appreciate you guys that watch our videos on a regular basis, and those of you that have subscribed, we really, really appreciate it. We like making the videos, and our sole intent is just to provide a little bit of information and take some of the anxiety out of moving to a new culture, a new country, changing your life, because it is a life-changing experience and try to take a little bit of the anxiety out of that for people and, and let them see that it can be done and what the experience is actually like. And if you know others that might be interested in that type of content, they, they might be contemplating getting out of the rut that they've been living in for many, many years, such as I did back in the United States. And just point them towards this channel and, and, you know, maybe they can find some information that would be helpful to them. Okay, so today's topic is reasons you should not retire in the Philippines in 2023. And these are just five things that you really have to consider and make sure that you're going to be able to adjust, adapt, or be just be able to put up with it whenever you get here. It's just a different culture in general. And my, I've had in, no problems making the adjustments, and I'm a pretty adaptable person just given the diversity of my background and career and, and the type of people that I've had to relate to on a professional basis over the years, which kind of made me a, a fairly adaptable person. But the very first thing that you're going to have to get over, get used to, <laughs> be willing to put up with is the climate. It's very hot here. Outside of just a few places in the Philippines, it's very, very hot. And you're going to sweat quite a bit. And then, you're, of course, you're going to have to decide how much air conditioning you're going to put in your house, how often you're going to use it, how much are you willing to pay for it. These are just things that you're going to have to consider whenever you're moving to a climate like the Philippines, where it does get very hot and it's quite humid as well. I mean, it's just a chain of islands and the humidity level is up near 100% almost all of the time. But it's a beautiful place to live and if you can put up with the climate, uh, you're going to be pretty happy that you did. And there, Like I said, there are a few places in the Philippines where the temperature can be a little bit more moderate during parts of the year. Even those places like Lipa, Baguio, Tagayatai that are at higher elevations, there are certain times of the year where it's really hot. I mean, it, it gets really hot here in Lipa. I, we have to wait until it gets late in the evening to go out and walk, and we get up really early and walk to avoid the heat. So if that heat is something that you can't deal with or you're not willing to deal with, you might not want to retire in the Philippines, okay? So the number two issue is the lack of availability of Western-style products in the stores here. Now, you can find most items that you're accustomed to getting. Let me just give you a few examples. If I go to the SNR, I can find certain brands of American cereal or American frozen food items but there's no diversity of product available. You can't find three different brands of cereal. I mean, you, you're limited to like Frosted Flakes, Fruity Pebbles, Fruit Loops, and Special K Red. That's what they have right now in the SNR. And they rotate those products as they become available to them here in the Philippines. Like, Jen likes Fruity Pebbles, and the last three times that we've gone to shop for Fruity Pebbles, they've not been in stock at the SNR. 
And you're, you can't buy Fruity Pebbles in any of the local grocery stores for sure. So you're going to have to be willing to put up with that and accept the fact that you're going to do a lot of shopping in the local market and have to adapt your diet and your lifestyle around what's available. It's what you want is not always available. Another good example is a video camera. I went to both malls here in Lipa because I want to buy a video camera to improve the quality of our videos. And the only brand that they have is Kodak that even remotely would be an upgrade from my cell phone. So rather than, you know, settle for a Kodak that was way overpriced, I just went online and ordered from Amazon, which I mentioned in the last video as free shipping to the Philippines now and, and made up for it that way. That, that kind of helps a little bit, but you have to deal with longer shipping times. And if there are certain products that you just have to have, try to think about that ahead of time before you come to the Philippines and send yourself or, or someone you know in the Philippines a bollock buy-in box which is a flat rate shipping box that takes about two to three months to get here. But you can fill it up with anything you want as long as it doesn't matter how much it weighs, as long as it fits in the dimensions of the box that they give you. I know when I first came here, I mailed two big bollock buying boxes full of all of my personal effects from the U.S. that I was going to bring here. And I mailed it to Jen's address in Calhoun City. And I got here two months before the boxes got here. So it was kind of like Christmas whenever we got those boxes. It had a lot of good stuff in it, including my Keurig coffee maker and some pots and pans and silverware and, and a lot of my extra clothing. Because when I first came here, I came with only a backpack. So just be aware that there's not going to be a great availability of Western products in the marketplace and especially in larger sizes can't have size that enough you're going to have to get out and really hoof it to find sizes that'll fit you if you're anything larger than an american large so it's but i mean you can find it you just have to get out and work for it the third reason would be the unreliability of the electric grid now jen and i have uh kind of made a game out of the brownouts that we get. And then they are a lot more frequent than you, you're going to get in the USA. I mean, at least once a month, sometimes twice a month, you're going to have a day of no electricity. Now, we take that as a signal to get out and do day trips and have a fun time. And, and, and we go out and we make a game out of it and see, let's see just how much fun we can have with, this many pesos we'll say how, let's let's keep it below 500 pesos or let's keep it below 300 pesos and see see if we can find a way to do it and it ju it's just kind of a fun thing that we do but if it if it's aggravating to you or you're someone that likes to stay at home a lot then you're going to get really irritated whenever that electric shuts down and it's going to happen and it happens frequently and there, there's sometimes that it even irritates me, especially when it's unannounced. Whenever you're just enjoying your day and all of a sudden, boom, the power's down. And then you get a message on Facebook that says, hey, the power's going to be off for the next three or four hours. We're sorry. And we're replacing a transformer. So you just have to like, you know, take it on the fly and figure out where the closest AC is and, and hoof it over that way. For us, we go up to the coffee shop at MPs. You guys have seen that on previous videos of ours and drink cappuccinos because it's nice and air conditioned there. Or you go into the mall because the, all of these places have backup generators if they're included in the brownout. Okay. The fourth reason is going to be the traffic and the traffic laws and the way that the locals drive here. It's very, very different than what you're accustomed to in the West. Now, I've never driven in England before, Great Britain or Australia, where they drive on the right side of the road. That, to me, that would be 
very, very different and foreign. But what I mean here is that there actually doesn't seem to be any uniform set of traffic laws. It, it's like every man for himself out there. Luckily, at least in the Lipa City area, people don't drive very fast. It, it's kind of condensed. The traffic is packed in. And that the cars rarely move faster than 20 or 30 miles per hour inside the city limits where we do the majority of our driving. And when we get outside of Lipa, the traffic is very sparse and there's hardly any cars out on the road. So we just zip right along and don't have to worry. But if you're a road rage type person, and you can't handle sitting still in traffic, then you're definitely not going to want to drive a car anywhere near a metro area in the Philippines. But you're going to sit still a lot. I know that we went to the mall just the other day and we saw a person that lives in the subdivision with us here, a plantation at the mall. And we were leaving at the same time from the parking lot. And, and we made it back to plantation an hour and 15 minutes before they did because there was Fiesta and a couple of the barangays on the way home, and the cars were just bumper to bumper. But every time there's a break on the scooter, we zip out past 50, 60 cars, get back in, go on the right side, past 10, 15 cars, get back in. And before you know it, I mean, we're already back home. And I know those people were still sitting back by the turnoff to get off the main road by the mall. So, but if it's, if it doesn't bother you at all, then hey, by all means, it's, then you're going to have a great time here. And you're also going to have to get used to the fact that there is no right of way or, you know, the, you, you may think you have the right of way, but I, trust me, it's who gets there first has the right of way, no matter which direction you're going. And a lot of times, if you're turning onto a main street, if you're not willing to stick your nose out there and get the traffic to stop, you, you're gonna you're gonna sit there forever. No one, they're not gonna stop and let you in. And there are there's just not that many traffic lights. On very busy days and during busy times, they have transportation department officials out there directing traffic, and they'll stop it and let it go one direction and then stop it and the other. But that's only during the peak times of the day. All of the other times you have to kind of make your own way out there. And you, you just don't, there, there's just not that much of a police presence out there. I rarely see PNP &P out on the road. It's rare to see a, a Philippine National Police person there or the Lipa City Police. We, we rarely see them out on the road. I think they must spend the majority of their time doing different types of investigations and traffic, that's for sure. Hey, and the final one we're going to talk about today is do not retire in the Philippines if you are an impatient person. You are going to be required to exhibit extreme patience almost on a daily basis. You're going to have to stand in long lines almost everywhere you go, places where you would think that I should not have to stand in line then you'll be at the supermarket at the SM and there's they have 15 checkout lines and they only have two open and there's you know 20 people in each line but they they don't open another line they just go right on and the customers don't get upset the philippine people are very very patient they're used to a slower pace of life they don't they just don't get that irritated that easily and that was something that I had to get adjusted to. I, I, you just don't, it's hard to get adjusted to just standing and waiting and waiting and waiting. And when you go to the LTO to get your driver's license or register your car at the end of the year, sometimes that, that can be an all day affair. It, it's just, it's just amazing the way the bureaucracy works here. You'll go in one building and they'll have you fill out a form. Then you have to take that form over to another building. They'll check the form. If it's wrong, they'll send you back and you got to go back and fix it and then come again. Then they Xerox copy it and then they send you over to another building to verify your insurance. 
Then they send you back to the original building where you stand in line to get all of your documents verified. If anything's wrong, they'll send you back. And you have to come, each time you come back, you're you're at the end of the queue. You got to go to the back of the queue again. So I mean, I there's one time that I did the registration and it only took a couple of hours. And then there was another time that we were there eight hours. We were there all day. So it's just something you're going to have to learn how to deal with. Patience is a virtue. Whoever came up with that statement <laughs> was a saint. Because it's definitely true. It's something that you're going to need to do. But just think about it. I mean, we're, we're coming here to retire. We shouldn't be in a hurry to do stuff anymore. Why stress about waiting in line? I mean, what are you in a hurry for? Just take it easy. Sit back. Enjoy the surroundings. Take in the fresh air. It's a beautiful country. But if any of these things you find irritating and you don't think that they're, you know, if it's not something that you think you could actually live with, you might want to consider another destination than the Philippines. Because there are some other destinations that are, you know, they're on the cheap end as well. And the cost of living is very reasonable. And the cultures are completely different than the Philippines. Now, one of the things that I left off of my list that you see on a, a lot of other people seem to put very high up on their lists is the crowing, the roosters crowing and the dogs barking. Those kind of things, they number one, they just don't bother me as much. And number two, if you really vet the areas that you're going to live in, and you, you go out and you check it during the morning, the afternoon, and night. Just drive through and see what it sounds like before you actually sign a lease. You can save yourself a lot of grief. The subdivision that we live in doesn't allow chickens, okay? So we, there, we don't have any chickens in Plantation Meridian, except two people that violate the rule, and they live way off in the, the corner. This is a huge subdivision. There, it's probably 2k from where we live i never ever hear a rooster crow and on our entire street we have one dog and that that dog is he lives right across the street from us and as you can tell i do a lot of my videos right out on the patio here and you can't hear a dog barking that, that dog barks rarely and when he does it's for a reason there, there's somebody like messing around out there so, I mean, we're kind of glad to have him. He, he doesn't bark at night. So, I mean, that, that's the reason that I didn't include those on my list because we were kind of careful to pick a place where it didn't seem to be very noisy, especially in the evening hours. There's no karaoke here after 10 o'clock. Whenever we first moved here and lived in Playardale, that was a different story. We could hear roosters crowing. They'd start at 4.30 in the morning and then they'd crow all day. And we could hear karaoke playing at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., on Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. One of the reasons that we didn't stay in Playardale very long. So the, anyway, those are some of the things that you're going to have to be able to deal with should you decide to retire in the Philippines. It, but if it is something that you do think that you can put up with, you'll really enjoy your life here. The slow pace of life, the reduced stress, the ability to come in and recreate your entire life from scratch, if that's what you desire to do. You can totally come here and start over. And that's the way I approached it. And it's worked really well for me so far. My stress level went from here to here just right after I landed in Cebu City. And even more so whenever I landed in Manila 10 days later. So anyway, guys, we got a lot of videos planned over the next few weeks. And hopefully our new camera will arrive here in a few days. And we'll give that a test run. And As always, we really appreciate you guys. And thank you so much. If you have any questions or you can think of other things that might be irritating to you. And you, you want to know it, what that's like in the Philippines. Just drop us a question and we'll do the best we can to answer it or, or try to find the answer if we don't know the answer. Anyway, until next time, we'll see you later. Take care and stay healthy.